Well, thanks for joining us this evening. And with that, my clock does now show six o'clock and we've got a lot to cover tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it kicked off. Hopefully a few more people will be joining us. We had approximately uh, 30 sign up last time I checked. So there ought to be a few more, hopefully we'll be coming on. I do see one of our council members is on and hopefully we'll have a couple more and, and the mayor even indicated she might be able to attend. Anyway, good evening. Welcome to uh, the second public input meeting with regard to the town's development of an active transportation plan. Many of you were part of that first meeting. We greatly appreciate uh, the participation that happened at that meeting. And those of you who took the opportunity to, to uh, complete the survey, all that information has been very helpful to our consultant as they have worked to prepare an initial draft concepts uh, for the plan. And we look forward to your continued input this evening to uh, give us some feedback on what we've gathered uh, through our study and, and through the input that we've received as we start to formulate uh, the actual draft of the plan. Your input this evening will be very helpful in coming up with that first draft plan for uh, review and comment. Before I turn the time over to Jeff uh, Engelman from J2 uh, to give the presentation, uh, I wanna make a, a few introductory comments. Uh, his presentation will last uh, about 30 minutes, give or take a little bit. Then we'll have plenty of time for some uh, discussion and feedback and input from those uh, who uh, are in attendance. So while we're doing the presentation, uh, please keep your uh, microphones muted. That way we won't have any background noise or disturbances uh, through the presentation. When we do get to the, the point of uh, having the discussion, uh, if you'd like to make a comment, somehow give me a signal, raise your hand, and, and I'll call on the next person, and then you can uh, turn off or uh, unmute your mic so you can speak, and, and we can go from there. Note also that uh, you can provide uh, chat comments along the way. If you have something you want to go ahead and ask or a thought comment you want to get out uh, as you hear something through the presentation, use that chat feature uh, at the bottom of your screen and provide the chat. Please provide that chat to the town. Uh, last time we had some trying to direct them to the consultant. Uh, we have people on, on uh, standing by from staff perspective to respond to those and keep track of those and it'll be part of our recording if you uh, do the chat to the town. If it goes to the consultant, they're not necessarily set up to be able to provide a response or to record uh, those comments. So again, I'll direct those to, to uh, the town. Then also, uh, just a reminder, this is a, a general planning type document that we're preparing through this process provide us uh, information on where uh, improvements are needed in the town, the type of improvements uh, that we need, some of the priorities, uh, where we really ought to concentrate on filling in gaps, uh, and that type of thing. It's not a specific document for specific improvements. So we're not looking at a specific intersection or a specific improvement at, at a given location. Those will come as a result of the work that goes into this plan as we get the priority set, understand the costs and the options involved. Then we can go back and future steps and look at those specific uh, improvements and understand the best uh, approaches to take and again, where the priorities should be. So with those uh, comments uh, as a backdrop, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Mr. Ingwood, let him get in his presentation. And I mean, my share the screen button and I need to guess, Jeff, which one do I need to pick here? Uh, I think if you just hand it over to me, John, I can take it from there. Okay, let me close that then. Okay. So hopefully, are you seeing uh, my screen now? Yes, I am. In okay. So again, good evening, everyone. This is uh, an active transportation update for the town of Fountain Hills. And my name is Jeff Engelman. I'm a principal with J2 Engineering and Environmental Design, the consultant hired by the town to provide this ATP. Right now you should see on your screen a graphic schedule for the project. And the green arrow kind of indicates where we are at in the process. We've gone through our information gathering and our inventory and analysis phase, and we are now in the preliminary ATP phase. And that phase included our involvement at the Festival of the Arts where we had a booth and, and gained some input. As a matter of fact, I know, I believe one of the gentlemen that was stopped by the booth is with us tonight. Um, again, tonight is our public second public meeting and our virtual. And of course, all the online input that John mentioned is available to everyone in attendance. 
So that's where we're at in, in regards to the, the schedule. We're looking to finalize this ATP somewhere next summer in the, in the year 2021. And I just wanted to give everybody kind of another background. Our Zoom public meeting was held, our previous Zoom public meeting was held on September 8th from six to eight. We had around 39 residents attend that meeting. At the same time, we had a 17 question survey about ATP that was hosted on the town's website. And we had 53 respondents to that survey. The survey was active from September 3rd to September 24th for three weeks. And the results and tabulated uh, results were posted for public review on the town's website. And I'm gonna go over several of those right now. So where residents currently like to walk, I think if you take a look at these big pieces of pie on this pie graph around this side of the right-hand side of the, of the pie graph, you're gonna, if you did the math, over 63% of residents like to walk somewhere near or around downtown. When we asked the public to identify what their walking destinations were, again, if you take a look at the bigger pieces of pie around the right-hand side, and kind of creeping up the left-hand side, over 68% of those respondents also issued downtown as one of their identified walking destinations. When we asked residents about where they see gaps or lack of sidewalks for them to connect, I think it's rather important to point out kind of the big three within the city, or excuse me, the town of Fountain Hills, Fountain Hills Boulevard, Shea Boulevard, and Saguaro Boulevard. So I call those the big three, and we have identified those in this ATP as areas where the town needs to take a closer look to see if we can close out some of those gaps efficiently. We also asked residents where with the most notable sidewalk gaps as identified by the public. And 53% of the residents, other than these that got into their exact neighborhoods, were along the minor arterials within the town. And most of those are those big three as well as others. So um, we wanna make sure that we're looking at those minor arterials and making sure that we're closing the gaps over a period of time with the town identified within this plan and on the mapping that we will be generating and you'll see later in this presentation. We also asked about bicycling in our survey. What are the most popular bicycling uh, destinations, and, or excuse me, areas or roadways. And again, the larger pieces of pie indicate that 46% of the residents are using the minor arterials, Saguaro, Palisades, Fount getting to Fountain Park, Fountain Hills Boulevard as their bicycling routes. When we asked bicyclists about their favorite destinations, this is a question we probably maybe have learned a lesson to reword maybe a little, to be a little more specific because over 27% said, oh, I just go out for a ride and I return to my house. Well, when we look at Fountain Hills, that means they either used or had to cross a minor arterial to get there. When I added up the larger pieces of pie, it looks like over 43% had to use minor arterials at some point in their ride just to make that connectivity. And then we also asked about identified bicycle safety issues. The two that stand out from the survey are distracted drivers and automobile traffic. We're gonna talk about that in our ATP as well and look at ways that the town can address that education system a little more uh, forthright. So this is our second public meeting tonight, December 9th. We'll have a third public meeting to be determined sometime in the spring or summer of 2021. We have a town council meeting where this similar presentation and any updates we make will be presented on January 5th. We will do another second town council meeting. That'll be scheduled sometime in the spring, summer of 2021. And we will do our second joint committee meeting between planning and zoning and community services, again, sometime in the spring or summer of 2021. So still more opportunities to hear from you and your neighbors and friends in regards to this ATP process. I wanted to let everybody know the other research that our team has been underway with. We've reviewed the Town of Fountain Hills general plan update, the Fountain Hills transit feasibility study. We've also looked at and toured around the Fountain Hills Unified School Districts, the four schools that are within the town, as well as the Fountain Hills Charter School. Again, in that joint committee that we had with the planning and zoning and community services, we're certainly very well aware of the five parks having visited each of them 
And we were made aware of three potential new town park locations that will also be referenced in our plan. And we looked at safety. As I mentioned in our previous uh, Zoom call, we've reviewed collision data involving bicycles and pedestrians in the town. And those have been reviewed to help us identify locations that potentially could be in greater need of improved active transportation facilities, such as signing, striping, uh, and, and markings on the pavement. This is just kind of a summary of those accidents. And you can see where a majority of the pedestrians and bicyclists within downtown is where the majority of those accidents and things have occurred. So that's gonna be a focus of this plan as well. Uh, again, making recommendations that the town can evaluate and then determine based on CIP how they can address some of these issues. So building on the town's success that they started in 2006, J2 built this map around that 2006 successful plan. This is a map that the city started back in 2006, and we have added sidewalk gaps and things that we've heard from the public on this map. And this map will become part of our ATP and part of the plan working forward by the town's perspective in closing gaps and making priorities. And what this map includes, that legend was probably way too small to read, and I'm hoping this one's a little easier, but it has four priority areas, priority one being kind of that lime green color. That's uh, hopefully going to be completed within a five year window. Then we have kind of a blue, very light blue priority two area. That's a 10 year plan. The red is a priority three. That would be a 15 year plan. And then we have a dashed kind of a purplish line. That's a to be determined. It could move up, it could move down depending upon CIP levels and funding. And then also there have been grant opportunities and this plan will also position the town very well to go after additional grants so that funding doesn't all come from the town taxpayers, but other sources of funds. And we also looked at the urban trail routes, both existing routes and proposed routes and how those could be connected and closing the gaps on those. And then again, all public and private sidewalks as well, those that have been provided by developers. When we were at the uh, Festival of the Fine Arts, we had broken the town into four quadrants so that residents could more easily see their particular neighborhood as opposed to that overall map. And so you can see on this map where those lime green colors are occurring, which our focus is on the downtown, of course, closing the sidewalk gaps in downtown and around Fountain Lake. But we've also included green lines up here on El Pueblo and Glenbrook Drive. And the reason that we're looking at El Pueblo is because of course, Four Peaks Neighborhood Park, EVIT, the Boys and Girls Club, making safe routes to schools and safe opportunities for residents to get to those public facilities. The same with Glenbrook, Glenbrook Boulevard and able to get the Golden Eagle Park and Fountain Hills High School, to give those residents that live in those areas an opportunity to get to those public facilities rather easily. In the Northwest quadrant, a majority of this quadrant has already been built out by either private development and a little bit of public investment as well, but there are still some gaps remaining and those are indicated though, although they, be, they were on the longer end of our designated areas in regards to priorities, but not to be forgotten in the Northwest Quadrant. In the Southeast Quadrant, again, you'll see the Fountain Lake here at the top of the map, where we are trying to make strong connections to the neighborhood, closing gaps in downtown. And then in our meeting with the Community Services Department, this neighborhood heavily uses Desert Vista Park and has no access to it safely. So we looked at developing sidewalks and closing sidewalk gaps along Saguaro Boulevard for those residents to easily and safely get to Desert Vista Park. The rest of those red lines, of course, indicate the priority three areas. Those are 15 year or out further enhancements. And probably one of the most visible purple lines, although there are purple lines throughout the map, those are the ones for future grants. And we know that when ADOT comes in to develop and improve Shea Boulevard, that these sidewalk connections along Shea will be a very high priority for the town. 
in the southwest quadrant. Of course, we're looking at that connection on Shea Boulevard over to Fountain Hills, and as well as closing that gap along Palisades Boulevard, just north of Shea Boulevard up to Palisades Boulevard to make that connection as well. We also took a look at existing bicycle routes and bicycle lanes within the town. And we wanted to look at what was existing and what gaps exist. In regards to the town, they've done a great job on striping and signing their current bikeways and bike lanes and bike routes very successfully. There still are some gaps for proposals, for proposed bike lanes and proposed bike routes. And we've identified those on this plan, although no year has been set on this map. Uh, these will be whittled away as time and money uh, allows it. Um, so we broke this in the same quadrants as we did for the walking sidewalk gaps. So this is the Northeast quadrant. And you can see our focus is closing some of the existing gaps in downtown. There are very few gaps that remain for both bike lanes and bike routes within the town. But we felt like the downtown area, since we're promoting bicycling and walking as part of this active transportation plan, that should be a priority, as well as where we saw a lot of the accidents. So we want to make sure that we're addressing those in the signing and striping effort as well. In the Northwest Quadrant, of course, we're looking at making kind of the, the standalone uh, connection right here along Sunridge Drive to get those bike routes connected up to Golden Eagle Boulevard. And so we've been working with the town to take a look at those roads and make sure that they get the striping that's needed to designate those. The same thing in the Southeast Quadrant of town, there's that, oh, I'm sorry, there's the Shea Boulevard. I'm sorry, my fingers are, I am, I apologize. Don't know what happened to my, uh, my mouse there. The Shea Boulevard for the future uh, grant opportunities to make sure that bike lanes are included along Shea Boulevard as well. Along uh, Fountain Hills Boulevard, which is currently not steined or striped from Shea Boulevard to the north, but it is north of Palisades. We wanna make sure that those roads get signed and striped accordingly. And then in the far Southwest quadrant of town, really the only remaining gap is that little gap over to the city of Scottsdale border along Shea Boulevard. We're also gonna make suggestions that the town evaluate new bicycle lane markings that have been accepted by the FHWA and other uh, governmental agencies for signing and striping of intersections. Since we know that several of those have been brought to our attention from the bicycling and walking community as well, we wanna make sure that we're taking a look at crosswalks. There are some new techniques to designate safe areas and, and really gives both an automobile, pedestrian and bicyclist an idea of where they're supposed to be, where they're not supposed to be, along with sign, uh, pro appropriate signage along these routes. So we're gonna propose that the town take a close look at some of these newer uh, enhancements for crosswalks as well as intersection treatments. And several of those in the downtown area would be perfect candidates for some of these. We're also gonna make suggested uh, suggested evaluations of new pedestrian signals. There are specific pedestrian signals that have come online recently. One of those is called a hawk, which is a high intensity activated crosswalk, flashing symbols. And some of these were brought forth by the public as well. Areas of respite in the median areas where pedestrians, bicycle, bicyclists have a chance to get some reprieve as they're crossing maybe a major road like the town of Fountain Hills Boulevard or Palisades. So we are making suggestions that the town look at some of these and institute these where traffic counts and other activities with pedestrians and our bicyclists uh, are necessary. We also wanna make sure that we're addressing the education part. That was a major thing brought up by a majority of the bicyclists. ADOT has publications that the town could get their hands on and distribute both at town hall, as well as at town events like Festival of the Fine Arts, where sharing the road in regards to bicycles and pedestrians, as well as automobiles can be put out, as well as these documents can be put forth to and are recommended in the ATP for driver edu education classes at, at the high school and grade school level. So make sure that we start educating the public 
about these shared roadways for both pedestrians, bicyclists, and automobiles at, as early as possible. We also looked at the roadway classifications network within the town existing, and you can see that a majority of the roadways within town are minor arterials. Then we have a number of collectors, and then a majority of the town is local roadways. So minor arterials, uh, of course, being Fountain Hills Boulevard, Palisades Boulevard, Saguaro Boulevard as the main, the main three. And then, of course, on the collectors, there are a number of those that flow through town, including El Pueblo, uh, as I mentioned, several others uh, during this presentation. So we took a look at those. And what is great about the town of Fountain Hills is how it was actually developed in anticipation of much more traffic on these roads than is actually occurring. What that provides for the town is on, major, on minor arterials, the opportunity to add sidewalks and bike lanes without going beyond the existing curb line. So all the improvements happen within the existing asphalt that's out there now. No disruption to existing driveways, no disruption to existing landscape, no disruption to mailboxes, or even the very few and infrequent light poles that may exhibit themselves. So this rendering on uh, the photo on the left is existing. The rendering on the right is a proposed uh, showing a sidewalk, a bike lane, two lanes, and still the turn lane maintaining on these minor arterials with no disruption outside of the existing curb line. So it means narrowing the lanes, still within safety standards, still allowing safe passage for fire trucks and emergency vehicles. And these standards have been accepted both within Arizona and nationwide. We've also developed a cost template to go along with these minor arterial narrowings. Everything from signing and striping to extension of driveways out to the new curb line, utility extensions if those are required, and if we hit an ADA ramp at a curb return. Those things would all be identified in this cost template, which would then allow the city to set a CIP budget that's more realistic in regards to what they can do along these minor arterials. That same scenario applies to the collectors within the town of Fountain Hills. Again, it provides a great opportunity in some many areas within the town to incorporate sidewalks and striped bike lanes, all done within the existing street pavement. No disruption to existing landscapes or adjacent development. No disruption to the driveways, no disruption to the mailboxes. Those all stay firmly in place. This again is a photo of existing on the left and proposed on the right. Again, similar to pre previous, we developed a very specific cost template for use by the town to estimate what these major collectors and modifications would cost so that again, they can establish a CIP budget to move these projects forward. And lastly, the local streets. Local streets tend to be a little more narrower in Fountain Hills, but they still provide an opportunity in many areas to incorporate sidewalks and what's called a shero, which is a shared roadway and bicycle lane, all done within the existing street pavement with no disruption to any existing landscapes or any areas outside of the curb and gutter. So this provides again an opportunity which is being kind of done already uh, in regards to sharing the road with bicycles. This would require some additional signing and striping on these roads, but again, no disruption to any residential, private residential landscape development and or irrigation system mailboxes, et cetera. Again, a similar cost template has been developed for this so that the town can set a CIP to look at local streets that might require this treatment. And of course, we know there will be situations, although we hope it's very minimized, where we would have to go from the back of existing curb into existing landscapes. These will be considerably more expensive due to the impacts to the surrounding developments, but those will be minimized wherever possible. This cost template is a little bit more um, in depth in regards to utility relocations, drainage improvements, the potential for retaining walls when we are pushed outside of the existing roadway envelope. All of those costs are captured on this particular template and would be reflected in the overall bottom line cost. Again, our goal in working with the town would be to minimize wherever we are supposed 
are proposing this to be minimized and look at using the inside track of working within the existing pavement. At our last public meeting, I know there was quite a bit of conversation about landscape and how it was overhanging and interfering with walkways. We were asked to develop a suggested plant list. We have come up with a thornless tree list as well as a thornless accent shrub and ground cover list for consideration by the town to use along public right of way adjacent to public sidewalks that can be easily maintained and not interfere with sidewalks. It still requires maintenance. I don't know any landscaping that doesn't, uh, but these are thornless and should not cause any damage or harm to a, pu a public person who may rub up against them. Based upon that background and where we're at currently, your unique perspective and what input you'd offer to add to this active transportation plan to make it even better is more than welcome news. And with that, John, I'll turn it back over to you to open it up for the Q&A and open chat. Okay, sounds good. Appreciate that, Jeff. A lot of good information there. I know there's been a lot of chat going on uh, during your discussion that uh, staff has been helping to respond to. So um, there we go. So anybody want to start with any comments, questions? Uh, and raise your hand, indicate you'd like to be the one to speak. Yes, uh, go ahead, Clyde. Start with you. Well, it's actually his wife. Yeah, okay. But first of all, did you really say that only 53 people responded to the survey? Is that, that that's correct? And and so you're basing a plan for the town of Fountain Hills on the input of 53 people? On the survey, not everything has been based on just the survey results, but uh, yes, we are a result. And that is actually a very good return in regards to public involvement um, uh, for an active transportation plan or even a parks and recreation plan. All right, that was my first question. And then can we get copies of your slides? Can you email those out to the participants? Uh, I think we could probably do that. The last time we posted it all on the website and I anticipate we will do that again this time. Uh, okay. In the good. session, and so the whole session will be made available. Yeah. All right. Great. Who else has a question or comment? Yes. Go ahead, Eddie. You go ahead. You need to unmute your microphone. There you go do that. Hi. Um, uh, hello, everyone. I appreciate um, being having the opportunity to participate. Um, I, I sent an email yesterday, and I, I'd like to hear some more about uh, changes for crosswalks and, and or lights. I, I find that in my walking, which is daily, an hour to three hours a day, that that's my biggest concern that even if I don't have a sidewalk, I can manage it, but I can't cross the street. And sometimes I really have to walk a mile to get to the other side of the street. It limits where I can go and how I can go. Thank you. Sure, thank you. And I'll let Jeff uh, provide a comment here in a second, but I just want to tag on to that. We appreciate the email that you sent us and uh, would encourage anybody anytime to go ahead and send us an email because we appreciate that feedback. Anytime you think of something, we get it into the system and gives us some other good thoughts to, to consider. So Jeff, if you want to respond to the the question. You bet. And, and during the slideshow, I did have a slide that had a number of different opportunities that the town will investigate. Um, putting up signals and crosswalks is a matter of a traffic study that has specific um, mathematical formulas that have to be met in order to, to meet the requirements of putting in an actual signal. And so that is not part of this study in regards to that level of depth of study in regards to traffic counts and speed limits and those types of things, that would fall to the town's engineering department in the next phase. But we are recommending that the town take a look at Hawk signals, which are activated by pedestrians or bicyclists only. They're not automobile sensitive in regards, they don't, they don't go off by an automobile stopping on a stop bar. They are actually activated by the pedestrian pushing the button or a bicyclist pushing the button. And, and those hawk crossings are becoming very, very 
highly used within Arizona. We also know there's flashing beacons and other ways to notify the motoring public about a pedestrian crossing. But again, those locations of those specific facilities would all be uh, dictated upon a traffic study and that would fall to the town's engineering department. The plan is not gonna say, place a signal here at Palisades and Longbow. Um, that would all be determined by the town. I hope that answered your question. In general, it does. And, and is there plans for a next traffic study that would be incorporated with this active transportation plan? So as, a, as next steps, yes. Each year as we go through that planning and budgeting process, uh, we will have this plan document that will set some priorities uh, for where we should focus uh, the resources available. And so then we'll do those specific studies uh, where we need to fill in the gaps and provide the connectivity. And I think one of the things that Jeff mentioned in the presentation as an example was along Saguaro. We know we've got a lot of residents on the west side and a park on the east side. There's no a uh, good spot for those people to cross. And so, again, that's one of the things uh, in general we've identified, but through a next level of planning, we'll figure out exactly where it goes and, uh, you know, what all will go into that. And I think Mr. Weldy might have a comment. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, John. In regards to the Desert Vista pedestrian crossing, the community services director and myself will be meeting with an engineering firm tomorrow to start the scoping for that and determine the design cost and a probable engineer's cost for that project. It is in this year's capital budget in the folder and the intent, depending on the cost for design and construction is to complete that first phase, which is the crossing of Saguaro from north to south at that location and also constructing a connector sidewalk on the south side of Saguaro to the nearby neighboring streets. And I would like to make one comment in regards, and, and there are several levels of signals and, and Jeff Engelman and highlighted some of them. So the hybrid flashing beacon is what we have already looked at for a couple of locations. The base price, not including any sidewalk or curb opening ramp modifications starts at about $15,000 for a flashing beacon. For a hawk signal, it starts at about $150,000. And for a traffic signal, it's above a half a million dollars. So as we are planning and moving forward in regards to safety, we have to keep these things in mind as they are critical with the limited funding that we have. Thank you, John. Yeah. So, uh, Councilmember Fredell, looks like you have your hand up. I do. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, I'm wondering, looking at that map of, of going out 5, 10, 15 years, some of those roadways are already ready to go, I, I would guess. Is there any thought about reviewing those timelines on some of those roads and if, if, if all is all that's needed is striping and or signage is there any way to move that timeline up on any of those or or is it just too too, too much involved in that so I'll, I'll give a first answer looks like mr welder wants to respond to and jeff might have one but but certainly what we've put out uh, as a concept in the different uh, years is our first blush at it. We're looking for further input to help adjust those priorities as we continue to develop the final plan, final recommendation. So yes, they are subject to, uh, to moving them around. And uh, certainly part of the, the factor each year as we look at our budget will be the cost factor. We might you know, pull a few that were, were higher priorities and mix them with a few lower priorities as the budget uh, might allow based on the cost of actual projects. Mr. Weldy, would you like to add to that? Thank you, John. Council member for Dell, and, and that is an excellent point to make. The town staff and management will be coming to the mayor and council in the near future for alternative transportation planning, including the streets and the sidewalks and the approvances there too, as part of a discussion that we need to open up about how we intend to fund that 
over the next 20 plus years. So indeed, it will be part of the discussion. And this um, active transportation plan is a critical part of that. And the work that J2 has done for us will help us provide guidance to the council in regards to that decision making. And if, if I could just add a couple of, of thoughts, John, and, and uh, great, great summary, Justin. Since 2006, the town has really been at the forefront of closing sidewalk gaps. The first map that they developed to really evaluate looking at sidewalks and trying to close the gaps was done in 2006. And that plan allowed tremendous flexibility to the town to readjust its priorities based on budget and need. And, and as a matter of fact, it's still serving them today. This crosswalk that Justin just brought up was brought to everybody's attention just over about three weeks ago about the Desert Vista ped crossing. Now I know it's been boiling away a little bit within the town before then, but just to see the flexibility that the town provides council member, I think should give you great ease to know that there's flexibility built within the ATP as well as that look ahead sidewalk gap plan that can be adjusted very, very easily and rapidly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Who has the next question? Yes, uh, uh, Craig Sipka. So you need to unmute too so we can hear you. Yeah, uh, this is Craig. And I have a question. You said that you would add sidewalks on uh, on the and maybe a curb, but leave the land and the mailboxes alone. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Then my concern is when I pull out and I see people walking, I might not see the car. You have to look, you know, and make sure that you're not going to run it. You're not going to have an accident when people are walking and you can't see. You don't have a visible visibility. That's a very good point. There's no difference in backing out now than there would be backing out in the future. I have another question. Yes. You know, the post office, when they deliver the mail, what, are they going to have an issue of going up on the sidewalk to deliver the mail? They haven't in other situations where this has been the case. So will the carrier, the post office carrier have to get out of the, the uh, vehicle and put the mail in? I don't sure I could answer that carte blanche for every situation. In most cases, they should be able to, it, was a, it would be a mountable curb so they can physically get their vehicle up and deliver the mail. But there could be situations where that may not be possible. Okay, all right. I guess the driver of the vehicle will have to decide what's best. Absolutely. <coughs> okay. Do you have another question? If not, I've got another hand up. No, no other question. Okay, you can come back if you think of one. So. Uh, Ms. Ertig, did you have a question? Is it Clyde this time? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So um, I did ask in the chat about speed limits, and I was told that the plan doesn't address speed limits, that town council is going to look at that and uh, also look at uh, uh, enforcement. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about speed limit because I believe it impacts the entire plan. Um, for example, 
um, when you want to cross the street, as Eddie was talking about, and you have a car traveling at 55 or 60 miles an hour versus, say, 35 miles an hour, uh, you, the reaction time of the driver, also the result of the incident, are complete, two totally different things. So if a car is traveling at 35 miles an hour, uh, they have time to slow down and stop and allow someone to cross the street. And you don't need to spend a million dollars on the signals. All you need is a sign and a crosswalk. I did say in the chat also, I live across from the high school and I heard the uh, smashing and the uh, uh, accident of someone crossing in the crosswalk there at the, the high school, which has lots of lights, signage, everything. There's a hill as you approach the school going west on Palisades. You go up over the hill and then you come down. And apparently that driver just plowed right through them and, and hit them. I don't know if they got killed or not, I'm not sure. Um, and I have seen some other accidents at the high school. Someone drove into a tree in front of the high school probably about seven or eight years ago and demolished the tree like right out of the ground. I mean, it was just amazing. And everyone also knows that if you have a speed limit set at 50, that no one really obeys that, that they're going 60 or 65 or whatever they're doing. So enforcement would be one thing. I see Jenny smiling at this, but uh, it really impacts this whole plan as far as I can see, because also, when I've been cycling and I have a bike lane on Palisades and there is signage, people, they just don't see you. And so if they're driving slower and in downtown it's I believe 35, if that was reduced down to 25, uh, I believe that would also really help uh, the pedestrians and the cyclists and also make it a much more pleasant place. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll give a little bit of response and turn it over to Jeff, or I don't know if Justin would want to say anything, but but certainly I, I agree with you that uh, speed is a part of the factor. Uh, as we've talked about before, we're not evaluating specific streets, specific locations. And so to make any specific recommendations about lowering speed at a given, on a given street, that wouldn't be part of this plan. But part of the plan is improving safety and educating uh, motorists and so forth. And uh, I can see where it would play into future recommendations to council as we are uh, making other improvements if uh, adjusting the speed is part of it. Uh, Jeff or Justin, any other comment? I don't have anything to add, John. Nor do I, sir. Okay. Well, thank you. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so you said, for example, you'll have pamphlets to hand out. Now, I would guess that, for example, the people who already are concerned about it would read the pamphlet. But the people who just are oblivious are not going to read the pamphlet, which are the, one, the people who are the problem. So, I mean, I generally stick to the speed limit. And, for example, I get passed all the time. And, uh, you know, you get the finger sometimes or whatever just for doing the speed limit and obeying the law. So, that maybe is a good idea, but I really believe that the enforcement and reducing the speed limit will, and I'm, I won't say anything more on it, but is, is uh, the, crux, the crux of the problem. Yes, so certainly don't disagree. That is uh, an issue that the town is trying to address also. Who else has a comment or question at this time? Here's your chance, anybody? Yes, go ahead. Someone else wants to say, I want to say one more thing. Yeah. Okay, I'm unmuted. So I just want to say one more thing then to do this plan without first addressing the speed limit issue is kind of putting the cart before the horse. 
because I believe if the speed issue gets dealt with, perhaps some of these problems will actually disappear. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Craig Zepka, you'll need to unmute your computer. Um, Stacy would like to add something on the sidewalk on El Pueblo. Is that well, if you put in all that sidewalk and all that, is that going to affect our property taxes? Are you going to up the property tax to cover the cost? So you know, that's uh, something we never can really answer specifically. Uh, property taxes and, and how the, the property values are subject to a lot of different factors. Um, those improvements going in uh, shouldn't affect them directly uh, because those values are really set on the what happens on the property, not things that happen out in the public right of way. Mr. Weldy has a further comment, I think. In regards to the property tax, the town currently does not have a primary property tax. So there would not be any effect to the property evaluation for a primary property tax for the improvements. It's because it's on a right of way and it's community owned, is that why? Well, again, as Mr. Welty said, we don't have a primary property tax anyway, so it's not going to affect any local taxes. But yes, the improvement is out in the public right of way. And so it's not an improvement to the individual property. And John, correct, or Justin and John, correct me if I'm wrong, but the current sidewalk enhancements and or additions that have been undertaken have all come out of the town's capital improvement project that is established every year by the city or town council. And so therefore the funds are generated through all sorts of different taxes that come into the general fund and the town then determines how much they're going to dedicate to sidewalk improvements every year. You are correct, Jeff Engelman. Currently the, the mayor and council, <clears throat> excuse me, increased our funding two years ago by $100,000 for the sidewalk infill. We currently have for the foreseeable five-year forecast, $200,000 per year coming out of the capital improvement program for sidewalk infill. And might I will add one more thing in regards to since a funding is the issue, I'd like to add just one more thing that the ATP when it's complete provides the town another tool in their toolbox to go after grants. Grants are provided by the federal government and the state government at no cost to the town of Fountain Hills directly as a taxpayer. Without a master plan, an active transportation plan that's been accepted and approved by the town council, many of those grants are not available to the town. Monies that are not related to a tax, specifically on a town resident, are provided, you get the benefit of a sidewalk addition, a bicycle lane striping, when you have a master plan that you can put into that grant application. So again, it just adds another tool to the town to help offset some of these costs through a different money venue. Thanks, John. Okay, very good. Other questions? Not seeing any. Okay, go ahead, Clyde. Just now I understand why we're doing the ATP first. Okay. <laughs> good. Phew. Okay, what else? Glad to stay here all night, but if everybody's done, then we can wrap this up. Let everybody get on their business. Uh, yes, go ahead, Jim. It's actually the mayor. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. And uh, everything that I was thinking 
you guys said. So it was, it was great. And I uh, appreciate you, all of you, your input. And of course, uh, um, you doing all the work here and all the heavy lifting and our staff sitting in there in their room at uh, 650 at night. Just uh, appreciate the work all around. And uh, thank you. Thank you for supporting us and, and helping provide the resources that we can do this. We think it'll be a big benefit to the town. So as Jeff mentioned earlier, there's going to be uh, more opportunities for continued input. We will uh, post to the website the uh, presentation uh, that he made. We'll also, when it's ready, we can put a link to this actual presentation and discussion so you can see that. We'll keep you informed of upcoming opportunities to provide input. There will be the town council presentation uh, January the 5th that we do know is one item scheduled thus far. There'll be other public uh, input sessions uh, through the spring and summer. So look forward to your continued uh, participation. And again, at any time you think of a question, email it to me and we'll get it into the hopper. So thanks to you all for attending tonight and have a good evening and hopefully you'll enjoy a rainy day tomorrow. <laughs> thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, John. And thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, John. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Thank you.